Hello kind people of YouTube and welcome back to another video. Um, as always we have a bunch of stuff to talk about today. Not the most exciting day once again in crypto news, but um, a lot of people are talking about the long term prospects of cryptocurrency, of individual cryptocurrencies right now as it is the beginning of the year. So we do have some things that are of note. Let's start by an article that is not so much news as just an overview um, that I think is good to, to get people to think about for a moment. And that is from the Daily Hodl, 12 companies adopting Ripple's XRP based payment solution X Rapid. Um, none of the information in this article is new, they just collected it all into, into one article. And I think it's important to, um, to just take a look here because um, usually we only hear about the four or five companies that have already started using XRapid. But um, there is a lot more happening in the future and we already have some early, some early signs of more companies getting in on this very soon. The number of companies adopting Ripple's XRP powered cross-border payment solution XRapid is expanding. A total of 12 companies have now confirmed they have either implemented or plan to utilize the technology. So far, Ripple has confirmed crypto exchanges Bittrex, Bitso, Coins.ph and Bitstamp will use the software solution to boost payments between the US and the Philippines and the US and Mexico. Ripple also says payment platforms Qualix, Mercury FX and Catalyst Corporal, uh, Corporate Federal Credit Union will use XRapid to improve the speed of their customers' cross-border payments. Outside of that, five additional companies have announced that they plan to implement XRapid in the future. And those are SBI Virtual Currencies, IDT, The Americas, Sandfriend, and Bitru. Ripple launched XRapid for commercial production in October, highlighting its use case as a regulatory compliant way to use digital assets to send payments from one part of the world to another. And there's a quote from Ripple here. XRapid eliminates the need for a pre-funded Nostra account when executing a cross-border payment. It sources liquidity from XRP on exchanges around the world. As a result, cross-border transactions occur in minutes and at a lower cost compared to traditional methods, which take days and incur high foreign exchange fees. So here we see that the infrastructure around XRapid is actually a lot better already than some people are willing to admit. Keep in mind, these are just the companies that have released public statements of intent. That means there are a lot more working on this in the background, not ready to make any kind of public statement yet. So here we have 12 companies already either actively working with XRapid or getting ready to introduce XRapid into their services in the near future. This of course, in addition to Ripple having built a network of 200 plus companies around them that are using their technologies in general, and the plan there obviously is to onboard a lot of them, if not all of them, ultimately to using XRapid. There is a reason RippleNet is the umbrella for XRapid, XVIA and XCurrent, because these are supposed to work in tandem and because companies are supposed to have access to all of them. Ideally use all of them, ideally use the XRP token with all of them. But um, with, with us starting into 2019, with... Um, with three exchanges and five companies actively working with XRapid, with a bunch more having already declared that they soon will for a total of 12 companies. I'm very excited um, what this will look like when we look back at the end of the year. If this number will look tiny then compared to what has happened over the year, because this seems to be accelerating. Keep in mind XRapid was just officially launched in October. That means there was not a lot of time for this to be integrated in any meaningful way yet. That means that um, a lot of companies are only going to start integrating this in the coming months because um, obviously you, when a new technology like this is out, you're not going to just instantly start using it and start, use it, yeah, start putting your customers money on it. There are, a lot of them are going to wait to see if this works out as well as intended, if this does everything as promised, if there are no major bugs and then they will slowly but surely integrate it. There are legal hurdles, there are regulatory hurdles, there are just, just technical hurdles because this does need to be um, integrated into their technologies. So this is gonna take a while, but we're already seeing this gear up. We're already seeing more companies willing to make the jump to XRapid because yes, it does eliminate Nostro accounts. That is a big, 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 big thing. Nostro accounts, are there are trillions of dollars in those that are just sitting around, nothing is being done with them. And banks can save so much money with something like XRapid. 
in that way, it is absolutely revolutionary for international transfers, for cross-border transfers. And the instant liquidity established through the XRP token, that is revolutionary stuff. That is something that wasn't possible until a couple of years ago. And Ripple seems like the... Ripple seems like the player that has the best chances of getting something like this into main, not mainstream adoption, because you can't really talk about that when it's at the in, when it's all happening in the back end. But Ripple seems most likely to actually get a lot of international monetary transfers to run through this, as opposed to some other crypto companies who have similar um, who have similar blockchains that are also meant for cross border transactions. Ripple just has the advantage that they already have a big network, that they have, I believe, almost 20 billion in funding behind them, that they have a lot of um, a lot of connections to the tech world and to the regulatory world. I think we're going to hear a lot more about XRapid in 2019. Now let's look at application of blockchain and not necessarily tokens for a moment. We've talked about blockchain voting a couple times before, and now Thailand is looking to get in on that as well. Thailand's National Electronics and Computer Technology Center announced the development of a blockchain-powered voting platform, according to a Bangkok Post article from January 3rd. Charlie Vorakulpipat? I'm so sorry, I have no idea how to pronounce that. Head of the Cybersecurity Laboratory at NECTAC, says the new e-voting technology was developed for use in national, provincial and community elections, and can also be applied to elect official, uh, officers in a corporation. The main purpose of the new blockchain-based voting system is to reduce fraud and maintain data integrity by using blockchain technology to send election results directly from the voters to the election controller. Once launched, the new system will allow voters to cast their votes via email. Their identity will be, will be verified by taking a picture with a mobile camera. Citizens, sorry. <laughs> Citizens of Thailand living abroad will have to visit a Thai embassy or consulate to vote and have their identities verified. Despite this limitation, Nectech believes the platform has the potential to speed up the election process by eliminating the need for election results to be collected from polling places and delivered to a central location. With the development of the new system complete, Nectech is now looking for partners to participate in pilot programs. Before Nectech applies the technology to a large political election, it wants to test the system on a smaller scale. Nationwide internet access is another hurdle to overcome before the system can be used on a larger scale. According to Nectech, 5G mobile networks must be implemented nationwide before the new platform can be adopted en masse. All participants must also have access to an affordable internet connection and identity verification tools. And this is, um, this is interesting because um, the big issue, or rather historically, electronic voting has often been touted as a response to, um, to fraud as a way to counter to counter voter fraud and make everything more transparent and secure. But in reality, it has often done the opposite, especially in America. There have been constant problems with electronic voting, with um, it turning out that a lot of these voting machines were easily manipulated, that um, there were often problems and uh, that paper voting actually turned out to be more of a hassle, but be much better to uh, combat fraud. But the beauty of blockchain is that it can combat at least some of these things. Now, the most exciting thing about this for me is that it sounds like there will be no voting machines involved. Now, voting machines were traditionally the point of attack for people who wanted to undermine electronic voting. So if people can send this directly from their smartphone to the blockchain, then there is much less of a there's much less of an attack point there. Now, of course, it is possible that someone might um, might develop some kind of virus or backdoor that can change the voting results on a mobile phone before it gets sent to the blockchain. So there are still potential issues with this. But there will always be potential issues. So I'm interested in finding out how this does in the trial runs. It's definitely a better solution than traditional electronic voting, which has mostly been a mess with a lot of countries not implementing it at all after seeing how terribly it um, how terribly it keeps messing up in some countries. Like, in the United States, not an election happens without some kind of issues around electronic voting, a machines malfunctioning, machines being, um, machines being attacked, uh, votes being changed. Not one election without some kind of issues with the electronic voting happens. So a lot of countries are staying away from it. Blockchain could be part of the solution. Um, it seems a bit ambitious to wait for 5G nationwide. I don't quite understand why they need internet that fast. Like, 
Even 3G seems like it would be perfectly capable of sending some information and a picture to a blockchain. But I'm, I mean, I don't know how their software works. Um, I don't know what exactly they need in the background. Just um, you don't have nationwide, you don't have consistent nationwide 5G in most developed countries. So I'm not sure when Thailand is going to have that. Let's talk about Bitcoin and XRP briefly because Vice Ratings is very bullish on both. And New Year means more speculative cryptocurrency predictions. Many predictions last year didn't envisage the enormous bear market that characterized the year, with Bitcoin dropping more than 80%. Vice Ratings has published its outlook for Bitcoin and other cryptocurrencies in 2019. According to Vice Ratings, 2019 will herald increased adoption, herald, not herald, increased adoption for Bitcoin. The international rating agency expects more people to consider the top-ranked cryptocurrency as a store of value. The expected result is BTC firmly establishing its status as digital gold. The forecast report also suggested that Bitcoin price could reach a new all-time high in 2019. This is the interesting part. This prediction comes from the apparent cyclical nature of Bitcoin price action, with major bear market declines followed by a new all-time high. Remember, I have talked about this repeatedly. We have seen the same cycles essentially repeat since the inception of the crypto markets. But that, of course, is no guarantee that this will continue. Um, it can't perpetually continue forever. At some point, we will reach a cap and at some point, these trends will change. But right now, to me personally, it is also looking like we're up for a new all-time high in the next bull run. Back in December, Bitcoin is reported on the call by Vice Ratings that prices reach a low enough level for investors to load up on Bitcoin. Vice Ratings also predicts a significant year for XRP, especially in its pursuit, uh, pursuit, pursu pursuit. Oh my God, my English is so bad today. I am sorry. It's early in the morning and I'm hungry, but I wanted to get this video out. <laughs> of cornering the global payment ecosystem. While identifying the progress made by XRP and Stellar, the rating agency highlighted XRP as having the potential to compete with Swift. Ripple spent most of 2018 extending its network of applications related to the banking sector, inking partnerships along the way. For Vice Ratings, XRP could, on the back of increased utility, displace Bitcoin from its perch at the top of the cryptocurrency market capitalization chart. For a brief period in 2018, XRP overtook Ethereum as the second largest cryptocurrency by market cap. I'm not sure we should call it a brief period. Wasn't it over a month? And it only ended like three days ago. It could, it could flip right back. This forecast represents a shift for vice ratings given that in 2018 the agency said Bitcoin would lose 50% of its market share to Ethereum. Indeed, most of the talk about the flippening has always been about Ethereum upstaging Bitcoin. However, the decline in the ICO arena seems to have negatively impacted such a possibility. Now, we've talked about XRP possibly flippening Bitcoin in here. I think that is a potential future event. I'm not sure about it happening in 2019. Because I think Bitcoin has very good potential to reach a very high price in 2019. Just of all the mainstream investor, billionaire investor, Wall Street interest. But of course, if XRP sees more introduction of XRapid, if we see another bull run, we will likely see it at least cement its place in number two and slowly but surely scratch away at Bitcoin. I'm not sure we will see a flippening in 2019 because as it stands right now, Bitcoin still has a very special image and the distance between XRP and Bitcoin is significantly larger than the difference between XRP and Ethereum has been in recent history. So I'm not sure Bitcoin, XRP would, XRP would have to go to five times its current price without Bitcoin's price changing much for it to flip it, which that's a possibility. I'm not sure the Bitcoin maximalists will let that happen quite yet. But it's very nice to see Vice ratings so bullish on both Bitcoin and XRP. Uh, keep in mind here, last year they selected only four cryptocurrencies that they gave a buy, and um, they are not they don't give out endorsements to cryptos a lot. They are mainly critical. XRP is one of the few that they just outright endorse like that. And last up, um, you have once again a crypto skeptical position that brings up a legitimate point, but takes it, in my opinion, just a bit too far. Major financial consulting company McKinsey and Company believes that there is little evidence of practical use for blockchain, according to an official post published on January 4th. McKinsey was founded in 1926 and has reported with a revenue for 2018 of over $10 billion, with over uh, 27,000 employees globally. The article written by three McKinsey partners notes that the evidence for practical scalable use for blockchain is thin on the ground, explaining 
Blockchain has yet to become the game changer some expected, given the amount of money and time spent, little of substance has been achieved. Furthermore, the post notes that the stuttering blockchain development path is not entirely surprising, since it is an infant technology that is relatively unstable, expensive and complex. The post then explains to reader that, readers that according to the life cycle hypothesis, the evolution of any product can be divided into four stages. Pioneering, growth, maturity and decline. During the pioneering stage, the technology is at its starting point and during the second stage, the project should take off and see success. However, according to the article's authors, for many, blockchain stage 2 isn't happening. And we don't really need the rest of this article. I think the big problem here is that they think blockchain should be in the growth stage right now, when I think it is very much still in the pioneering stage. Keep in mind, blockchain has only really existed for about 10 years and has only been in the public consciousness for about two years, maybe less. And all these big companies that are starting to develop into in blockchain, most of them have gotten into it 2018. All these patents, all these big investments are happening in 2018. So I think to talk about, to be disappointed that it is not pro probably in the growth stage yet, that is a misjudgment of where the market is. Blockchain is potentially revolutionary technology, and that means the events in its life cycle will happen over a long period. It, take, it will take a lot of development, a lot of money, a lot of people, and a lot of time. So for, for them to expect and be disappointed that it's not quite there yet, that blockchain would enter this growth stage firmly within one or two years of it entering mainstream consciousness, that is just completely... They're just completely overestimating where it should be right now. Um, I don't think we should hold blockchain against this against this um, hypothesis of where it should be in their opinion, because we're seeing a ton of development. Not a day passes without some country or company introducing some new some new use case or application for blockchain, developing some new blockchain-based technology or product, making some kind of big investment in blockchain or getting a patent in blockchain. Bank of America alone has like 50 blockchain patents and most of them are from 2018. So I think the problem here is that they identified something real that currently there are very few legitimate scalable use cases for blockchain. That is not because blockchain isn't capable of it. That is because it's simply too early in blockchain's evolution. Blockchain is still very much somewhere around the middle of the pioneering stage, not in the growth stage where, where they think it should be. And it doesn't have to be in the growth stage yet. We have time. We definitely have more time for that. And so I think their problem here is that they um, maybe they looked at the 10-year development and decided based on that, hey, it should be in the growth stage right now. But you have to keep in mind, it only really entered mainstream consciousness in the last year or two. And most of the big players only got into it in the last year or two. And development takes time and money. You can't just expect major development to happen within a year of all these big companies getting in on it. It's going to take longer than that. And with that, I'm going to end this video. I might do another one later, but um, don't get your hopes up too much. Not the most incredible news day, but I do have some, some more stories to potentially talk about. As always, thank you so much for watching. All the links to the articles in the description as well as links to my social media pages and ways to support the channel monetarily if you enjoy my content and think I should get something in return. If you don't want to give me any money or can't, that is also perfectly fine. I, I do this stuff as a, as a hobby, but um, if you like my stuff, if you want to support the channel, I would really appreciate if you just left a like, left a comment, and if you could get yourself maybe to turn off your ad blocker when you're watching my videos makes a huge difference. The likes and comments really help me get discovered on YouTube, get new people to the channel. And of course, turning off monetization, uh, turning off monetization, turning off your ad blocker helps me get paid for the time that I put into the channel every single day. So that would be really appreciated. Um, thanks for watching and I'll be back with you guys at the latest tomorrow.